order of avarice. In any city, in any country, go to any hotel between the hours of 2 and 4 a.m. and approach the reception desk. There will be a woman standing there, speaking to the clerk in an unknown language. At this point, rudely interrupt the woman speaking and demand to know the room the holder of avarice has just checked into. Do not apologize for your rudeness or politely wait for the woman to finish speaking, or the clerk will disavow any knowledge of the holder, and the woman will resume talking. And if you have not left before hearing your name passed through her lips, completing her curse, you will never be able to obtain any more of the objects. If done correctly, the clerk will stare nervously at you as if silently pleading for you to leave. Stare back intently, and after a moment the clerk will begin to cry. He will place two fingers over his left eye and violently tear the eye from its socket, then proceed to dig and scrape until what he is digging for is found. He will begin pulling out an old silver key whose teeth are jagged and sharp. Do not wait for him to fully extract the key, but instead move his hand aside and forcefully yank the remainder from his skull and place it in your pocket. The clerk will then feebly mutter that the one you seek is checked into his private suite. Leave the desk for the elevator without apologies or remorse, and approach the elevator. The doors of the elevator will slide open as you come near them. Inside is a man standing near a panel with only one button, with bloody thumbprints smeared on and around it. Demand that you be taken to any floor between 1 and 2538. You can also demand to be taken to the basement, and God help you if you do. You will begin a slow and seemingly endless descent, at the end of which the doors will be ripped open, and you will be dragged into the inferno. You can demand to be taken to the roof, at which point you will begin a seemingly endless ascension. As the doors open, they reveal a paradise that will bring tears of joy, but this paradise only exists as long as the objects are not gathered, and when they do gather, and they will, your paradise will become a place of unending pain and torment. Demanding a floor number which corresponds to an object you've already obtained will open to the room in which you met that holder. Anyone or anything residing in that room will stare at you with great malice and anger. Stepping into that room will only cause your own death. If the floor number you demand corresponds to an object you've not yet obtained, the door will open to reveal darkness for you cannot comprehend this room, and stepping out of the elevator will leave you trapped outside of time and space forever. It is highly advised that you only demand the floor number of the object you are currently seeking. As you step outside, you are in a hallway bathed in light from the row of windows facing the elevator. To your left, the hallway becomes brighter, but there are no doors you can see. This is not your path. To your right, the hallway becomes a dull crimson color. This will be your path. You are free to peer out the windows as you walk, but you will regret it, as what is occurring outside is unspeakably chaotic and grotesque. You will notice the doors you pass have a placard, on which is written the name of a holder. Do not open any door except for the one with the name of the holder you are seeking, because inside those rooms will be a trio of children with distorted faces. The one in the middle will reach out a closed hand and promise you that which you have desired most in your life in return for holding their object. If you agree and hold out your hand, an unseen object will be dropped into it and your hand will clench shut. You will be bound to this room for eternity, as your bleeding hand is forced to hold this unknown object and stare into the indescribable faces of the three children.
You will be overcome by such deep and previously unknown terror that you will open your mouth to scream and protest, but sound will never come, only deafening silence. The walk will seem to last for days, or even weeks, until you finally see the name of the holder you seek. The placard on the door is bejeweled and made of gold with the letters raised in silver. Retrieve the key from your pocket and unlock this door. At that time the key will disintegrate. If the key remains intact, then you are not a true seeker, and you will begin an agonizing disintegration of every atom of your body into oblivion. If you are a seeker, you will step inside to find a room with piles of gold, silver, jewels, many known and unknown types of currency, and stacks of property deed papers. But do not touch these things, for you will incur the holder's wrath and suffer it greatly. Before you lies a path where the floor is bare, and at the center of the room on the floor is a small imp, continually counting off seemingly random numbers, presumably counting the value of its possessions. Step forward and demand this and only this. I want all that is yours. The imp will reply. Then take as much as you can carry. You will feel an incredible urge to begin filling your pockets, but do not take anything, for it is a trick. The imp will begin telling of how he acquired all of his wealth, and why you shouldn't seek the objects, because they have no value. It is a long tale, and while the imp is speaking, your only thoughts will be about gathering as much treasure as you can carry. You wonder how much you can carry on this visit, and plan your return with large sacks and carts to carry off the rest. You will glance around and catch your reflection in a large silver tray. You recognize your face, but on it is a most horrible look that conveys a most sinister desire. If you look upon your reflection long enough, your reflection will whisper to you, Take the treasure now, while he still speaks. If you are able to resist this excruciating urge until the imp is finished, it will look up at you, muttering how foolish you are, and cast a small opaque cube at your feet. Within the small opaque cube radiates a dull glow. Retrieve the object and clench your fist tightly around it, and once you blink your eyes, the elevator door will open up to the lobby where you began. Walk to the exit, and you will see the woman you saw before, with her hand open and outstretched, speaking to you in that unknown language. Do not stop, and do not give her anything. Walk past her quickly, exit the building, and never look back. The opaque cube is object 547 of 2538. It was the soul of the imp.